God created his people in different cultures, countries, and in cities around the world. He made the human race. He made us one people under God. At first, when you see someone that looks and acts differently than you, you may turn away, but take your time. Look closer. You will see that we share the same dreams, the same troubles, the same world. Open your minds and hearts to one another. Love each other as he loves us. Do this for God. Honor his creation and let his love shine through each one of us. I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. Genesis. All you need to know. Now here is John Carter with today's message. Hi friend, I'm John Carter in Los Angeles, where it has been 121 degrees, the highest temperature in recorded history. And then we have these great fires that are blazing across the Golden State that today is not looking so golden because we're surrounded by a pall of thick black smoke. 121 degrees just a day or two ago. These events are asking, are leading people to ask some very pertinent questions. What's going on in the world? What's going wrong? Many people who are serious thinkers are saying, what does it mean? Where did we come from? What, what is the meaning to life? What is the origin of the human race? And what's going to happen? Are there answers to the human dilemma? Now today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about a tremendous subject. I want you to stay with me and listen to it from beginning to end, uh, if you don't mind. Today, we're talking about Genesis, all you need to know, all you need to know about everything, Genesis, all you need to know, everything that is important in life. Now the book of Genesis is without doubt the most controversial book in the world today because it deals with the most controversial subjects. Uh, who am I? Uh, where did I come from? Uh, why am I here? And uh, where am I going? Would you like to have the answer to those questions? I'm going to take my old Bible and I'm going to turn to the book of Genesis or the book of beginnings. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Would you please notice it? Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything you need to know, everything you need to know is found in this amazing book of antiquity, the book of Genesis. And this is the most important statement ever recorded in the history of the human race. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Very recently, the world's most famous atheist, one of the world's greatest scientists, Professor Richard Dawkins of Oxford University, was having a debate on the BBC in Great Britain. 
He was debating a pastor, a clergyman. And Richard Dawkins quoted the great book by Charles Darwin that gave rise to the theory of evolution. That man is simply the product of time plus matter plus chance. And this minister had the temerity to ask the great professor for the full title of the book. Richard Dawkins says, well, 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 the book is called um, um, on, the, on, the, on the Origin of Species. But the pastor wouldn't let him off the hook. He said, I want the full title. And the world's greatest authority on Darwinism didn't have an answer. And in his, should I say, despair, in his confusion, he cried out, Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> uh, that's why the English publication said it was a bad week, a bad week for atheism in Great Britain, where atheism is growing like crazy. Now, the title of the book, it's an amazing title, I want you to notice it. The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favoured Races in the Struggle for Life by Charles Darwin. It's about the most racist title that you could imagine. The preservation of certain races, favoured races, in the struggle for life. Listen to me, my atheistic friend. It was this book that gave rise to the massacre of black people in the Belgian Congo. They quoted Darwin as they chopped off the heads. It led to the rise of the Nazis who got their information from Nietzsche, who got his information from Charles Darwin and carried out the genocide against the Jews because they weren't favoured races. So much for atheism. The fastest growing religion today in Great Britain. Now look at Great Britain if you don't mind. I could never, never be an atheist and I will tell you why quite honestly I will tell you why I could never be an atheist like Richard Dawkins because I don't have enough faith. I don't have enough faith to believe this stuff. The man is the product of blind and personal forces. I don't believe it. But Richard Dawkins has got more faith than all the rest of us put together. And so I choose to call him the Reverend Richard Dawkins, uh, high priest uh, of the great cult of atheism. Think about it. Now, as I start on the book of Genesis, I want to make these observations, and I want you to hear me loud and clear, because some of you may not like what I'm going to say. Number one, the Bible was not written to make me a critic. No. Lots of critics in the world. Lots of critics in the scientific world. Lots of critics in the church. The Bible was not written to make me a critic, but to make me a Christian. Did you hear this? It was not written to make me a scientist. It was not written to make me a smart scientist, but it was written to make me a humble saint, not a scientist, but a saint. It was not written to make me smart, but to make me sorry for my sins. Have you read, met so many people who are, are, are so proud of being s smart? It would be good if they became humble penitents and were sorry for their sins because we've all got enough sins. The Bible was not written to make me a biologist, but to make me a born-again believer. John chapter 3. It was not written to make me 
a paleontologist. That's a person who plays around with old bones and rocks and other things. It was not written to make me a paleontologist, but to make me a penitent. A penitent. That's why the Bible was written. I wish we could all get this into our skulls. And everything that is true of the Bible is equally true of the book of Genesis. All you need to know. All you need to know. Here is the first great truth in all you need to know. Number one, God made the universe. He made planet Earth. And he made you and me. Do you think we can ever conjure up in our little peanut brains how almighty God made the cosmos? Oh, please, come on now. But the Bible tells me all I need to know. And I'm going to turn to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Dear hearts and gentle people. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Listen to the words. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man. No, I'm not a cosmic accident. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. This is the first great truth in all you need to know. God made you. Hey, are you listening to me? God made you, brother, sister. Therefore, you are special. You are important. Every person is important. Whether he is white, brown, um, black, um, yellow, who cares? God has got a very, very big family. And by the grace of God, you and I are a part of the family of God. And every person is important. Never, never forget it. You are important in the sight of God. And God loves you, brother and sister. God made you in his own image. You are a part of his family. So you are important and you are loved. Here's the second great truth. You ready for the second great truth? Everything you need to know from the book of Genesis. Here it comes. Second great truth. Marriage matters. Oh, marriage matters. I'm going to turn to Genesis chapter 2 and 23 and 24. Genesis 2, 23 and 24. I give it to you out of the book of Genesis, all you need to know about marriage. Adam said, or the word Adam means the man. Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. All you need to know about marriage. I don't care what the politically correct people say. I don't, I don't really care. I want to see what God says about it. God's original plan, my friend, was this. It's as plain as the nose on your face. God's original plan was marriage, and marriage matters, and marriage consisted of one man and one woman. Oh, you say, no, but that's not what we are told. I don't really care. I want to know what God says. All I need to know about marriage is found in God's book, the book of Genesis. It isn't written to make me a scientist or smart or sophisticated or shrewd or cunning or any of those things, but it is to make me into a person who is called a believing Christian. So God's original plan, one man, one woman. Thus it was universally accepted by everybody in the world for thousands of years. The Egyptians believed in one man, one woman. The Babylonians believed in marriage between a man and a woman. The Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, all of the Christians, every Christian, 
all the atheists. I've been to Russia 49 times, went there when the Soviet Union was in control. They all believed in marriage. One man, one woman. The atheists believed it. The communists believed it. The Muslims still believe it today. The Hindus believed it. The Americans believed it. The British, the French, the Germans, the Italians, the Russians, the Chinese, and the Australians. Everybody for thousands and thousands and thousands of years believed that what I'm telling you is the truth. And if I'm out of harmony with some people, it's because they're out of harmony with what the Bible teaches. They're out of harmony with what God says in his holy word. I'm going to come to the words of the greatest person who ever lived, the greatest person of all time, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to come over here to Matthew chapter 19 and verses 4 and 5. You folks still listening? You folks still with me? Matthew 19. And verses 4 and 5, are you ready for this? Jesus said, He answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Listen carefully to me. Jesus spoke about marriage. Who, who, who is this Jesus? Jesus is the creator living on this earth as a human being. Jesus is God in human flesh. Jesus is the person who made the universe. Jesus is the person who gave us the book of Genesis. Jesus is the person who inspired the Holy Scriptures and Jesus is the person who gave us marriage. And Jesus said that a marriage is between one man and one woman. So God's ideal, the father, the mother, and uh, the children. Now, I've been living here in these great United States for about 35 years, so I know this nation. I love this nation. And all the presidents of the United States of America believed in the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the great presidents of the United States of America believed that marriage was a relationship between one man and one woman. For instance, this man here... President Clinton, who gave us the Defense of Marriage Act. When he was the President of the United States, he came out and he said ever so plainly, a marriage is the relationship between one man and one woman. Every president believed it, except one who came more recently. But Genesis said, one man, one woman. That's all you need to know. So I want to say this to you today, and I say this to you out of my heart. Fathers are needed. Mothers are needed. Not just mothers, but fathers are needed. I had a blessed childhood. I was brought up in Australia. My parents were the salt of the earth. They had come through the Great Depression, which was a time of hell. My father was a crane driver who worked out there on the ships during the Second World War at the Can Cross Dry Dock. More recently, my family received a plaque after the death of my father to honor him for his work fighting the Japanese and fighting the Nazis. So I was brought up in a home where marriage was sanctified. I just can't get these great truths out of my mind because they were taught to me. And I want to say something else, and I, I want you to hear this. Are you listening to me, my friend? I want to say it to you. I believe in freedom of religion. I believe in freedom of speech. I was talking to a friend recently, and I was talking about the sanctity of marriage and the person said to me, you don't really have the right to those views. You don't have the right to express yourself. I said, 
I believe, I believe with all my heart in the great constitution of the United States of America. And I believe in freedom of religion and I believe in freedom of speech. And that is why, by the grace of God, I'm going to talk on about these things. I'm going to keep on preaching and I'm going to keep telling people that marriage is between one man and one woman. Book of Genesis is the topic today, all you need to know. Here's the third great truth from the book of Genesis. The Sabbath is a part of God's plan for your life. Now, this is going to be new to some of you. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 down to 3, and I want you to hear this. All you need to know goes back thousands of years. It goes back to the days of Adam and Eve and the creation of the human race. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 down to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. So God made it all. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now listen to me. The Sabbath doesn't belong just to, just, just to one race. It doesn't belong to just some church. The Sabbath came from the hand of Almighty God. And the Bible says that God made the earth by his massive power. It doesn't tell us how God made the earth because these tiny little minds just could not comprehend the tremendous power and the might of Almighty God. But it tells us that after God had created the heavens and the earth, the Bible tells us that God made the Sabbath. And God blessed the seventh day. Let me tell you this, my dear friend. The Sabbath is needed more than ever to renew our starving souls and our battered bodies. I want to tell all of my friends across this great land of the United States and across Australia and around the world, I want them to know today that Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. He made the Sabbath, and when he came to this earth, he kept the Sabbath. I'm going to turn over here to Luke chapter 4. I'm going to turn over here to the New Testament, and I want you to notice what I'm going to read to you today. Luke chapter 4 and verse... 16 down to 19, Luke chapter 4 and verse, let me see, verse 16, it says, and he came to Nazareth, that's Jesus, for he'd been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up to read, Jesus was a Sabbath keeper, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. When Jesus Christ commenced his messianic mission, he started it on the Sabbath day and he turned to the prophet Isaiah and he's telling the people there, I have come to give you good news. And he announces this on the Sabbath day because the holy Sabbath day is the rest day. It is the blessed day. It is the best day because it represents the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is about spiritual rest and salvation from sin, rest for our sad, broken down bodies, our distressed souls. And so Jesus starts his mission on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is the rest day, the blessed day, and the best day. 
The Sabbath was given to us by God. It is the Lord's day. It is the Christian's day. It doesn't belong to any sect. It comes to us from the Garden of Eden. It is given to us by the hand of Christ. It is given to us because we need it. We're talking today about the book of Genesis. All you need to know, all you need to know so that you can be the person that God wants you to be. Stay tuned with me, friend. I've got so much to talk about today. The book of Genesis, all you need to know. And we'll be back in just a moment. The Carter Report is now streaming on demand for you. Now you can have the teachings of John Carter anytime, day or night. By streaming The Carter Report, there is more content for you to choose from, and it's easy. If you are new to streaming, all you need to do is purchase a streaming device. It doesn't really matter which one. You can buy a Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV from any major retailer. You or a family member can plug the device into your TV and sign into your internet connection. Do a search for the Carter Report and download the app to your device. From then on, your device and the Carter Report app can provide you with hundreds of on-demand programs. You can also take the Carter Report with you wherever you go. The official free Carter Report mobile app can be downloaded to your phone or tablet. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the app. Additionally, you can find Carter Report programs on your favorite podcast. You can also watch us on Vimeo or YouTube. Type the Carter Report in the search box. You can watch hundreds of uninterrupted John Carter teachings whenever you want for as many hours as you want. Travel with John Carter as he circles the globe to bring the gospel to millions of people. Watch the Carter classics from over 50 years of ministry and gain knowledge from stimulating interviews with Christian leaders. You now have multiple ways to watch the Carter Report. And once you start streaming, you'll find comfort in having these teachings readily available to you whenever and wherever you want for free. Welcome to the inspirational world of John Carter. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.